Okay, so we're live on Facebook now. So morning to those that are watching it on uh, Facebook. Um, so just a few notices before we begin our service today. Um, firstly, I want to say a big thank you to, to Roger and to um, Mick Lewis um, and Hilary as well, um, who aren't here today. But um, you're the spot that actually it's hard to even see that there was any problem. <laughs> We've had the plaster work sorted up here. Uh, do you remember it was starting to come away and we had a leak? So the leak in the roof has been fixed um, and Mick's painted over that. And it, you'd never know, would you? Um, they did an absolutely fantastic job, so a massive thank you for that. We've, we've actually been able to do quite a few sort of niggly jobs on the church building during the lockdown. So um, that's been a, a sort of bonus, really, I suppose, that we've been able to do all that work. So thank you very much um, to the church wardens and to Mick for and Ian Glossop, who's done the building work, um, really fantastic job, so well done, thank you. Um, of course, you will all know now um, about the sad death of our beloved priest, David Hull, um, the other week. Um, yes, it's been very difficult. Um, now, I wrote um, an email um, describing a little bit about what it was like at the end, um, and just making the announcement of his death. Um, if you're not on email and you haven't received it or seen it, um, I have printed it out as a letter format and there's some on the desk at the back. So as you leave church today, if you'd like to take one of those with you, you're very welcome to do so. Um, one of the things that was really special um, on the day that he died was that his daughter Ashley told me that he, David wanted me. In the last few weeks before he died, David was making sure, like he always does, that pe other people had things <laughs> and he wanted people to have um, various things um, as a gift from him. And a few years ago, his daughter Ashley went to Teze in France, which is a Christian community. We're quite familiar with the Teze music. We often sing it during communion when we're allowed to sing. Um, and when she came back from Teze, she brought back for David this communion set which um, they make, they have a pottery at Teze and the brothers make pottery to kind of fund their ministry. And she bought this for David some years ago, years and years ago. And David wanted me to have it, which I was very moved by. Um, so I shall use it today in David's memory. So you'll see me taking that up for communion. And it's kind of handy that there's only me taking the wine at the moment because that perhaps wouldn't be big enough for everyone on a normal, normal basis. So yes, I shall use use the um, set that he gave me um, in his memory today. So David's funeral is going to take place on Tuesday morning. Um, his coffin's going to be received here in Clown Church tomorrow evening. And we'll have a little ceremony just with the family in here. And he will stay overnight in this lovely church, which I, I can't think of a nicer place to have been brought, actually, before my funeral. Um, so he's going to be brought to, to here um, tomorrow night. And then if you would like to show your respects, because obviously we can only have 30 people at the crematorium, um, if you'd like to pay your respects on the day, um, it's basically the cars are going to be leaving uh, Clown Church at 9am. Around 9 a.m., the cars will come through Clown um, and they will go into Clown and then down Booton Lane. So, you might want to stand on Church Lane here along the side of the, the churchyard, or you might want to stand on Booton Lane if you live nearer there. Um, and then the cars will go up to Brimington Crematorium. So, I think quite a few people are going to come out and, and stand and clap his coffin past, sort of thing. Um, so, it'd be really nice to see some people at the time, it'd be nice for Chris and Ashley to be able to look out the window and see all the support for David um, on Tuesday morning. So bright and early Tuesday morning. Um, there's been some slight confusion about what's happening on Tuesday morning. The car, basically David's going to be picked up from here and taken back to Craswell because quite a few of the people that live in Craswell wanted to show their respects. So the cars are going to drive a little bit around Craswell early and then back here from nine o'clock. So if you live in Cresswell, you can um, stand on the streets in Cresswell, um, near where Chris and David live. So, um, so that if anyone's heard rumours about that, that's what's happening. But the cars are definitely leaving Clown at 9am 
uh, to get to Birmingham Crematorium um, and the service is at 10 to 10. Um, but I wouldn't recommend trying to get to the crematorium because I think it would be difficult to manage crowds and things like that. We will be having a big Thanksgiving service for David next year at St Mary Magdalene's in Cresswell because it's a lovely big church and it'll be able to fit everybody in and we'll have music and we'll have and David had, had planned out what he wants for that service so it's sort of almost in lieu of his funeral in some respects so we'll be able to give him a really big send-off next year. So just before we start our service I thought it would be appropriate to uh, light our paschal candle, our symbol of the resurrection in memory of David. Now I had problems with this at bulb. <laughs> it went out a few times. I hope it's not going to happen again. Someone's behaving, I don't know. Yes. Also, you can't blow a candle out when you're wearing a mask, <laughs> I've discovered. There we are. So let me just say a prayer. Remember, O Lord, your servant David, he has gone before us with the sign of faith and now rests in the sleep of peace. According to your promises, grant to him and to all who rest in Christ refreshment, light and peace, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Please be seated. So some of us are back here for the first time in some months and I always find that when I walk into this church you can sense the presence of God here because it's been a house of prayer for nearly a thousand years. So as we recognise God's presence here among us Let's pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secret sign, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able. We'll have to let the angels do the singing. We'll do the singing. <coughs> Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we 
bless you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. As we stand, let us pray. Almighty God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church, open our hearts to the riches of your grace that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our reading. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 56, uh, verses 6 to 8. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister <coughs> to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it and hold fast by my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them, besides those already gathered. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from Romans chapter 11.1, uh, verses 29 to 32. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrelevant. Irre I can't say it, irrevocable. Uh, just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now been disobedient in order that, by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, so that he may be merciful to all. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel reading. Alleluia, alleluia. We do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, yes, Lord, but yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Please be seated. Today's Gospel reading is one of those that makes you go, huh? Jesus doesn't seem to behave quite like we're used to, does he? He doesn't initially come across as very nice. We sometimes think that Jesus is the nicest person that ever lived, but he wasn't nice in the British sense. As C.S. Lewis wrote, Aslan is not a tame lion. Jesus isn't nice, he's kind, yes, but not nice in the fluffy sort of sense. So let's try and have a go at understanding what's going on in this gospel reading. The first thing to note is that this encounter with the Canaanite woman happens in a crowd of people, mostly Jesus' disciples, but also perhaps a group of people from the area of Tyre and Sidon. Now to us, these place names mean not very much, but for any Jew, Tyre and Sidon represented foreign enemy territory. A bit like we know now that the Jews didn't get on with the Samaritans, the same could be said for the region of Tyre and Sidon and the people who came from there. So the Canaanite woman is a Gentile, a non-Jew, and someone with whom a Jewish rabbi, like Jesus, would not be expected to speak. Remember that Jesus is a consummate teacher. He's just been speaking to some scribes and Pharisees about the tradition of hand washing, and Jesus offends them by saying that they need to take care more over what comes out of their mouth than what they put in. Jesus is on a roll with his teaching, and the crowds follow him to hear what he has to say. And after the argument with the Pharisees, the disciples, perhaps a bit red in the face, that Jesus has offended them, he goes deliberately to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Why? Why has Jesus chosen to go to the border of a rough area where no Jew would be seen dead? Perhaps he is wanting to teach his disciples a lesson. The way to understand this encounter with the Canaanite woman is to keep in mind that Jesus is a Jewish rabbi and he is trying to teach his disciples. The audience in this account is the disciples and us, not the woman at the center of the story. Everything Jesus says and does in this encounter is his way of teaching his disciples and us something new, something a bit uncomfortable. So Jesus is there in this rough area and a woman from that area approaches him. She's clearly heard of him and knows that many of the Jews see him as the Messiah. She uses the title Son of David and addresses him with honour. Jesus says nothing. This would have been expected. It might seem rude to our ears, but a male rabbi would not speak to a woman directly let alone a Gentile woman. The disciples get irritated. Send her away, they say to Jesus. She won't shut up. But remember just how earlier the disciples have asked Jesus to send the crowds of needy people away before. And what we've learned is that Jesus doesn't like to turn anybody away. Jesus then rather cryptically says, in reply to the disciples, note, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. But Jesus is saying this, not in the territory of Israel, but in the territory of the foreigners in Tyre and Sidon. Why visit this place if he came only for the lost sheep of Israel? Maybe he's trying to beg the question of his disciples, who are the lost sheep of Israel? Maybe a bit in the same way that that lawyer says to Jesus, and who is my neighbour? So the disciples find themselves agreeing with Jesus, yes, yes, you're not here for the likes of her, are you? Just us, the lost sheep of Israel. And then the woman persists. She comes and she kneels before Jesus, a desperate mother, and she says, help me. And Jesus replies again, again for the benefit of the disciples, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. This is a pretty derogatory thing to say, 
But again, the disciples probably nodded along, confirmed in their prejudice that a woman like this was no better than a dog, and didn't deserve Jesus' help or attention. And quickly and wittily, the woman replies, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. The woman has risen to the challenge. Jesus wanted to reveal to the disciples that he came for all people, even foreign women, and this object lesson is complete. He then, rather than insult her further, declares, woman, great is your faith. What a contrast to what he said to Peter last week when he walked on water, you of little faith. Perhaps Peter began to go a bit red at this point. Jesus has just given this Canaanite woman a great compliment. Jesus assures the woman that her need will be met and her daughter healed. Just as in the story of the centurion's servant, Jesus declares the faith of a Gentile to be greater than that of his own Jewish disciples. And he heals two people he never even meets, the centurion's servant and this woman's daughter. Jesus is an incredible teacher. He not only uses parables and picture language to help us understand God, but he walks us and the disciples through our own prejudices, turning things on their head at the last minute. I wonder what views and prejudices we hold that Jesus would like to turn on their heads. I want to leave you today with a parallel modern story from a friend of mine. Andrew Greystone woke up last year to the news of the terrible shooting at a mosque in Christchurch, New Zealand. He couldn't help wondering how the Muslims at his local mosque on that Friday morning would be feeling. So he decided he wanted to do something. He got a piece of card and wrote on it, you are my friends, I will keep watch while you pray. And he stood outside the mosque for an hour and a half. When people came out of the mosque, one person took a photo of Andrew with his sign. And within hours, this photo was shared on social media all around the world. It went properly viral. He describes it in his book as going a bit fungal. <laughs> it went properly viral all around the world. And Andrew writes of this experience in his book. What people seemed to respond to was an image of an ordinary looking bloke wearing a flat cap and a jumper, doing something a bit transgressive. I had jumped over the fence and gone onto a neighbour's territory. That was exactly what the Christchurch gunman had done, except that where he went with guns and hatred, I went open-handed and smiling. Some people thanked me for taking a risk. What risk? A small risk of rejection, perhaps. The possibility of being misunderstood. But you can't start a friendship of any kind without taking small risks. Andrew went and stood in foreign territory and God used him to teach us all a lesson. And this is what Jesus does. This encounter with the Canaanite woman was in a place he had no business being, a Jewish rabbi in an enemy territory. Andrew went, a white British guy in a flat cap, to stand outside a mosque. He stuck out like a sore thumb but it is in these places on the edge, these unfamiliar places, that God can turn up. And this is how God transforms us. We need to move outside of our comfort zone, outside of our well-honed and long-held opinions, and let ourselves be challenged and reminded that no one is excluded in the kingdom of God. Amen.
please would you stand as you are able as we come to declare our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the only begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things are made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please sit or kneel as we come to pray. God of purity, cleanse our thoughts of all that would abuse or demean others. Forgive those sins that infect our character. We pray for all those who are victimised because of their colour of their skin or their sexuality or their nationality. We pray for prisoners of conscience. We pray for all those who seek to support refugees around the world. With heart and mind and voice, we will sing your praises. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God of compassion, your son had his scope expanded by the Canaanite woman's persistence. Challenge the boundaries we set to our charity and concern. Help us to remember that no one is to be excluded in the kingdom of God. We pray for our broken world. We pray for the situation in Lebanon. We pray for a new government to be formed that can bring things to justice. We pray for all those involved in the cleanup operation after the explosion. We pray for the situation in Belarus, in Hong Kong, and all nations struggling to cope with the pandemic, making difficult decisions, and we pray for our own government at this time. We pray especially for all young people that have either received or are waiting for exam results this week. And we pray for a resolution to that, that justice will be done. May your justice give cause for all to delight in you. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. God of hospitality, you set a place for all at your table. Open our hearts to embrace those easily excluded and despised. Help us to step outside of our comfort zone and go to places that we wouldn't normally go. We will declare your saving health among all peoples. Lord, in your mercy. 
God of healing, at your word the girl was released from her distress. Announce your freedom to all weighed down with sickness and infirmity. And we pray by name for those in our community. Wyatt and Garrett, Garrett Ruthven, Barbara Needham, Veronica Blackwell, Margaret Gilmore, Luke Fur, Sandra Meller, Chloe Parks, Betty Wood, George Naylor, Maureen Pearson, Elizabeth Hamilton, Robert Verity, Lily Wood, and Audrey Wilkinson. In a moment's quiet, we name before God those known to us in need of our prayers. <coughs> Lord, have mercy on all in their distress. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of hope, you bring life to all who call upon your name. Draw into your eternal family all who have died. Remembering John Wybrow, Thomas Edward North, Pam Rundle, Peter White, Baby Walter Lockwood and the Reverend David Hull. Grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Merciful Father, I have said these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. stand as you are able for the peace. Blessed are the peacemakers. They shall be called children of God. We meet in the name of Christ and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a socially distanced sign of peace. <laughs> peace be with you all. Stand. We're using a Sunday communion set that David gave to me. As the grain was scattered in the fields and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside and now reunited on this table in bread and wine, so Lord may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lord, Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks to the Lord Jesus. Father, we
we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Lord, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy,
children to chapel and back to your seats. If you would prefer to receive blessing, if you could bring up your order of service, then I'm going to give you a blessing instead of giving you the bread.
our pilgrimage. You have willed that the gate of mercy should stand open for those who trust in you. Look upon us with your favour, that we who follow the path of your will may never wander from the way of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for giving us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, who willingly offered in our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. During this difficult time, when our church buildings are closed, we're still a church, meeting virtually for prayer services and fellowship, loving our neighbours by offering practical support to the vulnerable, and caring for our communities. The work of our church is reliant on people's generosity, 
generosity that is a hallmark of a lived out faith and a testament to it. We give to our church in a variety of ways, but with the closure of all our buildings, we cannot receive all the gifts that we usually would. So we really need your help now. If you're able to give more at this time, here's how you can help. 